What's up guys, my name is Andy, and on this video we're going to upgrade to an electronic radiator fan on my 1966 Mustang. This is not one of those, it was on the list of things to get to and i just been dragging my feet. This was one of those things where I broke something and so now we need to either replace it or take the opportunity to do an upgrade. So on my car, let's take a look at it. So on my car I have this generic sh fan shroud that to, to go on my uh, champion radiator and the radiator has been great except for this this fan shroud is just kind of a generic piece that I have made to to fit you know you can just attach on the side and it doesn't it's not a perfect circle around the fan blades in fact there's a lot more clearance on the bottom than there is on the top and actually there's more clearance on this side than there is over here on this side and <laughs> the other day I was driving, I might have might have gotten on it just a little hard, and and when you do that, when you've got tired motor mounts, uh, and you pitch the motor a little bit, uh, the fan blade, if it gets too close, can snag your shroud and bend it and pull the screws out and uh, make a lot of noise to where you think something really broke. So uh, I was able to to limp the car home. It was pretty noisy. That fan smacking on this metal shroud made a lot of noise. But got home, was able to replace this. This one got ripped out, but thankfully this stud was just sitting here on the on this frame piece. Um, but this one was gone, so I had to put a new new uh, fastener in there and kind of bend it back into place. And and there's there's not very much clearance now on these things. This it's really not ideal to drive like this. I need to get this replaced. So. Instead of buying another shroud, uh, I decided to go to electric fan. And one of the reasons why is uh, when I was doing the T5 swap, and any kind of time you get to do something with the transmission, the motor, sometimes you have to drop the back of the motor down to get stuff, you know. And by doing that, it, it forces the fan blades up into the shroud. And I don't plan on doing a lot of work back behind there. However, if I put electric system on here, then it disconnects this fan blade from here. I don't have to worry about it running into the shroud or anything like that. So we're going to go ahead and take this shroud off. Then we'll take the fan blade off and, uh, and then we'll show you what we're going to put in for the electric uh, fan. In fact, let's go look at those parts right now. All right, the first thing we're going to need is, uh, so I guess you can get a fan and you can attach it to the radiator and you could put straps through the radiator and kind of hold it on, but it just really looks kind of cheap and, and half done. And so what I did is this uh, this uh, shroud piece that um, just a piece of aluminum that was formed. It's designed to fit my uh, Champion radiator that I have. Um, this this stuff right here. This is just a protective layer, so when they do the laser cutting, uh, they don't mar up the the, uh, the aluminum. And then when they form it, you can see you might be able to see these lines. On the side here it doesn't really dig into the aluminum very much it kind of keeps it clean while they're forming it and cutting it but anyway so this is the piece we're going to use and then the size of radio that i have will accept a 16 inch fan so that's what i purchased and that's one of these guys right here it's it's a generic fan it's not a, a spal or spall or whatever it's it's just a generic fan in fact it was 40 bucks on ebay for this fan uh and it came with the uh the relay kit that will allow us to plug this uh, let's see this way plug this in and we'll utilize we're just gonna it comes with the this would go into the uh, intake manifold uh, into the coolant so that it would be triggered by the temperature of the coolant but we're not going to use that we're just going to uh, use a, a ground uh, on the car and we'll use the switched uh, accessory uh, 12 volts source to power this thing and it'll only turn on when the car's on um, but this is set up to, to turn on at 185 degrees and really this car heats up quick enough that the fan will be on within a minute or so of the car starting so we're just going to just go ahead and wire it so it's on when the car is on and here's the other pieces that come with this is just some feet that would plug into these four spots here and then uh, which we're, we're not going to need those and then these are the straps that if you didn't have this aluminum shroud piece uh, this would allow you to run this through the radiator fins and attach it so we're not going to use that part we're going to use this but anyways this fan was it was 40 bucks on ebay it's cheap it's generic and really the only downside so far that i've noticed is the depth so from 
from this surface to right here were like three and three quarters or three and seven eighths, something like that. And I don't think I have that much space uh, between the backside of my radiator and that water pump pulley uh, where the, the pulley for the alternator is plugged on. So we may have to cut that down, um, but that's okay. We can do that. Um, and we also may be able to position this this uh, fan in a position where this part doesn't touch that pulley, but we'll find that out when we get in there. So the first thing I want to do is, like I said, we're going to pull that fan and uh, the shroud off of the car, and then what we'll do is we'll we'll mock this up by figuring out figuring out where these holes need to be to mount this uh, on the radiator, and then from there we'll we'll put this on there and kind of see. If this can, if this needs to do this kind of movement to uh, to make it fit, and if we have to cut uh, off the the shaft of that water pump pulley, then we'll we'll do that. But uh, so we'll start taking stuff apart. All right, here's what I was talking about. This part right here, this end to the back side of the motor, I think we're gonna have interference here. Also, pro tip, <laughs> when you're taking this off, undo the belt on the alternator first. That'll make it a little easier uh, when you're doing this. So now what we're gonna wanna do is put that uh, shroud up here and we can start marking the holes, uh, You know, using these tabs on here, there are these slots to figure out where we're gonna put holes in the, the shroud and then, um, once we get that mounted, then we can kind of start mocking up where the, the fan's gonna be and, and how much room we have. Actually, I couldn't wait. I wanted to see where we were gonna, how this was gonna come out. So I've got this the shroud piece on here. I've got the fan, and if I set the fan up too high, I mean, you can see how much, there's, you know, three eighths of an inch interference. I mean, really, we're gonna have to almost cut that nub completely off the end of this this uh, water pump pulley uh, shaft. So. Um, you know, there was, I read, read online that maybe you could offset this fan, you know, one direction up or down or whatever to kind of give some room. And even if I, because this shroud here can go up and down about a mm, quarter inch and then moving the fan, I mean, really the fan all of a sudden is not, it's not really on, not in line with, you can't really see it on camera here, but there's a big gap down in the bottom here and this thing's sticking up above on top. So. We're just gonna have to cut that off. That's okay, we'll get it done.
<laughs> All right, here's the part of no return. So what I did is I put the I put the pulley on here and just marked how much of that that stud was sticking out. This this the shaft here was sticking out. Marked that with a sharpie. So I know I need at least that much out so that it'll help center this this pulley. And it's gonna be hard to see, but there's a black Sharpie mark on here. And so I'm gonna use a cutoff wheel. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can use a hacksaw or a sawzall, jigsaw. I've got a cutoff wheel, I'm gonna use that, and I'll probably use a grinder just to clean up the edges. But uh, hopefully we'll do this. And also, you're gonna wanna take your time on this. You don't wanna heat this up, because you might damage that bearing in there if you get this too hot. So maybe take a cut, let it sit for a second, and you know, just kinda work your way up to it and, and don't rush it. So let's start cutting. Just clean this, clean the dirt off of here. I don't need to have that on there. I think everything looks pretty good here. We need to, uh, let's try the pulley, make sure that everything still goes on there good. Everything still moves, that's good. The pulley fits on there, and it's kinda hard, it just barely, just barely sticks out. So that's good, I think we're gonna have some enough clearance there. The next thing, uh, and I probably should've mentioned this earlier, you're gonna have to get shorter bolts. Uh, so this takes a 5 16 24 thread, and we're gonna buy a half inch long bolt and that will uh, hold that on there. And if you can help it, try to find low profile heads if you can because while the, the heads of these are gonna be out here, it shouldn't interfere, but you don't wanna get some big headed uh, uh, hex bolt or something to go in there. But uh, all right, that looks pretty good. Let's start bolting in the, um, what we'll do is we're gonna bolt the fan to the shroud, and then we'll bolt the shroud in the fan in place in here, uh, and uh, and make sure everything fits. All right, one thing I need to do is double check and make sure I got the polarity of the fan in the right direction. Um, because the fan is directional, we want it to pull uh, through the radiator, so I want it to spin this way, which if you're looking at it from this direction, I want it to spin clockwise, but if you had it backwards, it'd be the other way. Anyways, I suspect that the black wire is ground and the blue wire is positive. So I've got the black wire hooked up to the ground and we're just gonna touch, well, you can either touch the battery right here or or this terminal right here is, is also live. Uh, so we're just gonna touch that and uh, and see which way the, the fan goes. Ooh. Okay, so it is spinning clockwise, which is good because that means this part right here is gonna be up against the radiator and it's gonna be going like this and that's gonna be pulling air out of the radiator. So we've got the right polarity. So when I hook this up, I know that the black wire needs to be ground and the blue wire is the positive side. All right, now that we got these holes drilled, uh, you know, going back, what I had done here is I don't have a way to make a slot easily. So I just drilled three holes to kind of give me some adjustment. But really, looking back now, the, the slot is in the tab on the radiator. So just a single hole here would have been fine. And then I could have you know, slid this thing up and down in there, but whatever. So if you guys are gonna do this, just a single hole would be fine. And then also, you probably saw me using that uh, unit bit as a deburring kind of tool. When you don't have one, you just use what you got and that that large unit bit did a pretty good job of putting a, you know, just a slight little bit of a chamfer in there and, and clean that hole up. So now we can pull this protected layer off because now we're done drilling holes and getting this ready, so get this cleaned off. This hardware wasn't included. Uh, I just had to go to the store and get some bolts, but uh, just using basic quarter 20 fasteners and, uh, and we'll just put this through there and secure this to the shroud. Like I mentioned before, there isn't much clearance Space between the head, the, you know, where the, you put the fasteners in here, and the in the fan. So what I did is I bought some of these uh, button head, these these Allen head 
screws just because the head is just a little bit shorter than the uh, the fastener on a on a regular uh, hex head bolt so it might give me another millimeter or two of clearance which may be what we need when we're putting this together all right that's on there also one of the downsides with this setup that I've got is that there's not going to be uh, any much clearance between the fan and this pulley. So changing this belt out, if I ever have to do that, may require me to have to remove the fan assembly to get the belt through here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's put the let's put the fan in here, and you'll see the distance. All right. So that's how that's going to go in there, and. When we hold this in place, you can see that there's there's not much, you know, there's maybe maybe three sixteenths of an inch, quarter of an inch between uh, the pulley and the end of this motor and those heads of those fasteners. Now, what I was hoping that is as the motor moves around when you're when you're you know revving it up or whatever, that as this moves relative to this. That those heads, because they're rounded, they'll roll off anything. They won't snag anything and tear it up. So this is not ideal. Um, really, a, a, a shallower depth fan would be would be better. In fact, one that didn't have that nub on the back there would probably be the best. But this is where we're at. This is what we're going to do. So I think from here we can go ahead and finish securing the uh, the shroud to the radiator, and then we'll start on the wiring. guys this is really close as you can see that as those as this fan pulley spin or this water pump pulley spins around those fasteners are spinning around that that hub there on the motor um, but you can see there it's really close to that wiring and when this motor as it moves and pitches around you know depending on the load and what you're doing how you're driving and stuff like that this motor can go up and down and in and out. I mean it's just I mean, I'm glad I have those those button heads on there, um, but we may have to do something else. I did see that one thing we could do is cut a slot in here and bring this radiator back behind this mount and run it, you know, just kind of straight down in that way. And that'll give us 3 sixteenths of an inch or so more clearance than what we've got in here. We may need that. So that's something to keep in mind when you're doing this. You may want to have to look at moving your radiator and also I have a thicker radiator than normal so that's soaking up some of the gap that we have uh, to work with okay so the next part is wiring and really the wiring part is not exciting at all um, I am gonna show you guys so this is the the uh, wiring diagram that came with the uh, fan that I bought off of eBay <laughs> there's spelling errors it doesn't make all of the sense and I think you can navigate through it but what I have found is this wiring diagram uh, that I just found online does a better job of kind of describing what we want to do, except for the wire colors are different. Um, we can kind of combine the two diagrams to get the wires that we need. Um, and really the biggest thing is we're just taking the power off the battery, off of the, the, the positive side here, which either you can grab it right here or you can grab it from the battery. And then we're going to grab a switch terminal off here. So when the coil, when you turn the key, it turns this coil on, it makes this post active and we'll just take power off of that and run it to the relay and then we'll run the backside of the relay to just a ground because we're going to have this fan on when the car is on um, and again wiring stuff is boring so what i'll do is i'll just go ahead and get all that wired up and then uh, we'll come back when i get it done okay we got that relay put in place uh, i just mounted on the wall this is the if you'd rather remember i did a video on a relay for the electric uh, choke and that's kind of what some of the spaghetti is. And then the rest of this is uh, this new relay for the fan. So uh, it ended up working out pretty good. The blue and black wire on the relay actually match up with the blue and black wire on the fan. So I don't have to worry about polarity, but that's okay. 
Um, and then we go ahead and got it, we have it grounded. We've got a constant, we've got our switched wire hooked up here. And then uh, one thing I did do, um, the, 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 the nuts that were holding the, the shroud to there, I, there, it was about a sixteenth of an inch because it was that kind of sandwich pinch piece that just pinches onto here. So I went ahead and just put regular nuts back here and that sunk this another sixteenth of an inch and just gave us just a little bit more clearance in there. We may, we may need that. So, um, like I said, uh, <laughs> that sixteenth of an inch, uh, don't let them fool you. That'll make a difference. Okay, so, and then the other part, um, we may need to slice this just a little bit so I can pick this radar up and then drop it back, back behind this wall. We'll see how that goes. Um, but, everything's plugged in, everything's wired up, uh, and again, this is set up to run just with the, uh, with the car turned on. So let's go ahead and turn the car on and see if I hooked it up all right. as I do when stuff works on the first try. Um, a lot of times I'll try things out just to make sure I don't short something or break something before I put it on camera. And this time I really did hook it all up and I didn't turn the key on until we had the camera on there. And um, maybe I wanted to catch if there was sparks because that's a little more exciting. But this time it everything worked um, and that feels good. And you guys probably know exactly what I'm talking about. So again, um, I just wired it up so that it's, it's just on when the car's on. In fact, you can hear how loud it is. Um, with the car running, it's not as noticeable. Um, how often are you going to sit here with the car turned on but not running so that the sound with that isn't going to be an issue. Um, the only other issue that maybe we do want to address is that, that, that clearance issue between the water pump pulley and the back of that fan. Um, you know, like I said, because I have that fatter radiator, maybe it's worth doing what I was saying by moving that forward, maybe a you know, 16th or, or 3 16th or whatever it'd be, eighth of an inch. That just might give enough clearance. I, uh, I, when I had the motor running, I did rev it up a little bit just to see if I can get the motor to kind of move and bounce a little bit, and it didn't move at all. Um, but I imagine, you know, banging through the gears, um, that motor's gonna pitch a little bit, and we'll see uh, if, if we have enough clearance or not. Um, all right, guys, that, uh, that takes care of that. Um, let me know what you guys think, uh, if I should move the radiator back. Um, let me know if maybe, you know, I should put that, that switch in um, for the, the thermostat switch so that it turns it on. Again, because it heats up so fast, waiting until it gets to 185 degrees before this kicks on isn't really going to do anything, um, especially as hot as it is around here. But anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I do read them. A lot of you guys see that I answer every one of your comments, and I do appreciate you guys asking questions and saying stuff. It's kind of fun to interact with you guys and help out. So. Um, guys, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, and if you subscribe, I appreciate it. It helps my channel out, and we'll see you in the next one.